What's poppin' everyone? Tara Lynch here with the next big thing, the video cast that shares all things infotainment. What does the job market really look like right now? Well, Reed Keller joins us to give us some inside scoop on the 2020 job search, and of course, we go over this week's top stories and trends. Let's jump right in. with our trends in news, health experts are warning against the rapid reopening process, saying it could be very dangerous for this country. Dr. Fauci from the National Institute of Health and Dr. Redfield from the CDC testified to a Senate panel on Tuesday saying that opening up too quickly can be deadly. Now, the U.S. death toll has topped over 80,000 lives, and many states are relaxing those stay-at-home orders in order to open up businesses. Now, this comes after the White House experienced an outbreak of COVID-19. A few staffers were exposed to and tested positive for the virus, leading to a quarantine of top U.S. officials. I feel if that occurs, there is a real risk that you will trigger an outbreak that you may not be able to control, which in fact, paradoxically, will set you back, not only leading to some suffering and death that could be avoided, but could even set you back on the road to trying to get economic recovery. Continuing with our trends in news, last week we discussed the difficult decision that colleges and universities face as to whether or not they should hold in-person classes in the fall. Now, after testimony that we just heard about from top health experts, the California State University system plans to host most of their classes in an online forum. Now, there will be some exceptions for nursing students and students enrolled in lab courses, but there will be very strict guidelines for all students to follow. Chancellor Tim White has said that keeping the classes online is necessary because of the data that continues to roll in about the progression of COVID-19. The University of California system has not made an official announcement yet, but it looks like they are planning to follow suit. Switching gears to our trends in the real world, we have seen that the job market has been pretty tough as of late with COVID-19. And I'm very excited to welcome in Reed Keller, who is a young professional in the sports media industry, currently on that job hunt and is experiencing this job market both before as a recent graduate from Ithaca College and, and now in COVID-19. Reed, thank you so much for joining me today. Sarah, thanks for having me. It's a real pleasure to be here. So, Reed, you and I go way back. So, I know that you uh, were in the television radio department at Ithaca College. You graduated last May. So, can you tell us a little bit about, you know, the job market when you graduated and the job market that we're all experiencing right now? Yeah. So, I mean, they're two completely different job markets. First, when I was applying was your very, you know, usual run-of-the-mill, you know, you apply, you do first rounds of interviews maybe go eventually for an in-person interview. Uh, you get to make connections with the person that has been shepherding you through this process. And then, you know, I was fortunate enough to get two jobs in quick succession right out of school with the Philadelphia Eagles and then later NFL films. And those were very regimented step one, step two, step three job. And then after the season ended, the football season ended last year, uh, I was out looking for another job, uh, was going through that process once again, got really close. And then it actually happened that uh, I was scheduled to go for an in-person interview and then things started getting a little more dicey. They turned it into a Zoom meeting, kind of like what we're doing right now. I still thought I did really well. And then immediately after when I was expecting a yes or no, whether I got the job, they said, we're putting the whole thing on pause. We'll let you know what we know, and that's where we've been at so far. And you mentioned just the differences in the interview process, not even, you know, the jobs yet. Um, so can you talk a little bit more about, you know, what communications are coming from employers, potential employers? I mean, we're seeing everything from hiring freezes to, you know, we'll take people on a part-time basis at home. So mm -hmm. what are they saying? Yeah, I, I think everyone's kind of handling it a little bit differently because, you know, maybe some industries know more than others. So for sports, which is, you know, where my interests mainly lie, no one knows when they're going to get back to playing games. 
no one knows what those games are going to look like, or in the case of Major League Baseball, as we've seen, where those games are going to be. You know, if you're applying to a team in New York, which has been one of the hardest, hardest hit places in this virus, are they going to have to pick up all their operations and play games in St. Louis or something like that? You know, nobody has any of those answers. Whereas if you're applying to be, if you're retired and you're reapplying to be an essential worker on the front lines in a hospital, they're begging people to come out for those jobs. So it does, it does kind of change the way that people communicate, uh, what their needs are, what, what holes they can fill right now, how they can do that safely. It's all very up in the air. And something also to know, I mean, you are from that metro New York area, so especially much more difficult uh, for people like you and I, both from New Jersey and Connecticut. And switching gears just to talk about, you know, as I mentioned in the intro, you graduated last year, so you are a young mm -hmm. professional in the communications field. Um, what has it been like just on you? It, it seems like a frustrating process. Yeah, it's incredibly frustrating, especially because, you know, I was very close to getting what I thought was going to be a springboard job. I'm still in that limbo period. Uh, I've done a lot of what I like to call radar pinging, which I did even when I was, you know, even when I was coming off of summer internships and I was at school, if I saw something that was in the news about a company that I worked for, or if they were going into an event, that's a yearly thing that I worked on when I was there, I would say, Hey, you know, just checking in, hope you're doing well. Uh, I know what goes into this event. I remember doing it at a great time, you know, just keeping in contact with people. And that's been very helpful through this. But again, you hit that wall of, it's great, you're still interested. We're very excited to continue this process when we can. Um, but that's, you know, that's all you really can do. You just got to stay on their radar, maintain your interest and exercise an abundance of patience, which I think a lot of people are learning they have a little bit more of than they previously thought. You had a lot of great insight. If you could narrow it down into one piece of advice for people who are in exactly your position, what would that be? Just stay patient, stay resilient. I mean, that's kind of, that goes for everything. That goes for if you're standing in a longer line at a supermarket or if you're applying for the job. I mean, everyone's going through tough times. You're not alone. They know you want the job. They know you're excited. They know your skills. They know your weaknesses. They want to, you have to believe that they want you as part of their family uh, and you're going to get that job one way or another. Reed, thank you so much for coming on to the next big thing today. Hey, I've been waiting to do this for a very long time. <laughs> I feel like I've made it now. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you soon. Sounds good. Thank you so much, Reed, for that great advice on how to navigate the difficult job market right now. We move on to look at our trends we love this week, and this trend has me wanting to go back to December when I actually had tickets to see this artist in person. COVID-19 canceled all of Taylor Swift's shows as part of her Loverfest concert series here in the U.S. She's looking to reschedule those shows for 2021, and we will all be enchanted to see her sing in person once again. But that doesn't mean we are never ever getting back together with Taylor in 2020. She's encouraging everyone to shake it off and tune in to Taylor Swift City of Lover concert. Miss Americana recorded her last show before quarantine in Paris, and this concert will fill the blank space after American Idol Sunday at 10 p.m. on ABC. Now, I just have one question for you. Are you ready for it? Hamilton the Musical will be making its way to the small screen earlier this week. Disney Executive Chairman Bob Iger said that the recorded version of the show will be featured on Disney Plus earlier than expected. Fans can watch the original cast starting July 3rd, and the show was directed by one famous face you'll definitely recognize, Lynn manuel Miranda. Now, this announcement came the same day that Broadway said they will remain dark until Labor Day at the earliest. While fans have to wait a little bit longer to see their favorite shows in person, you can be in the room where it happened July 3rd on Disney+. Plus. In early March, a devastating EF4 tornado ripped through Tennessee and one family's dog went missing, but Fido recently found her way home. 
Bella, the Australian shepherd seen here, alerted her family, the Johnson family, that the storm was coming and they were able to hunker down successfully. But Bella and the family's other dog did not make it to shelter in place. Unfortunately, the other dog passed away and Bella was nowhere to be found. In early May, the family received a call that Bella was hiding behind a pet store in town and she was able, after two months, to be reunited with her family. Reunited and it feels so good. Before we wrap up, I wanted to give you our trend for you this week and it is how to stay organized. Now you've probably seen the memes and heard your parents say it a few times, but are people really picking up projects that they haven't gotten around to during quarantine? Well, they are, and it's important that you try to organize your space because it makes you a little bit more positive and more productive. At my house, we're going room by room and taking shifts on who cleans out what in order to repurpose, throw out, or donate items that we don't use anymore. Now, I have a few tips for you on how to declutter your space, whatever that space may be. The first question to ask yourself is, when was the last time I used this item? If it was more than a year ago, probably toss it, get rid of it. Now, if you have more than one of something, definitely donate or repurpose in some other way. And if you ask yourself, did I forget about this item? Well, yeah, that's another sign. You should probably get rid of it too. Now check your local donation centers to see if they're taking items during COVID-19. If they aren't, you can also post items to Facebook Marketplace or tag sale pages. People are bound to want some free stuff. Okay, all you cool cats and kittens, that's all the time we have for the next big thing. I'll be back next week with more infotainment news. If you have something big to share, put it in the comments below. And remember, when you need the news that pops, I'll be here with the next big thing. Tara Lynch, out. <laughs>